Hello and welcome to a June fashion edition. That is June 1937, where we see some really fun trends for swishy skirts, boleros, wonderful novelty prints and floral prints, floral headpieces. And if you're thinking, this all sounds a bit <laughs> 1950s, you'd be right. A lot of fashion historians have pointed out that the war interrupted what was happening in fashion in the late 30s. So already we were seeing a lot of trends in the late 30s that we then see again in the 1950s after the war years. So we've got the swishy skirts, Valeria's gorgeous I love them, floral and novelty prints. And also some really characteristic late 30s features like puffed sleeves for all of those who like Anne of Green Gables like a puffed sleeve. Lovely puffy sleeves are really distinctive of 1937. And the other thing that's distinctive is a kind of love of silk and velvet little floral corsages. On which subject, you can't have failed to notice my hat, <laughs> which is a late 30s hat. And it's rather ingenious because it's a cage hat. So I'll just show you. So it actually, you can see by cage, it means it's sort of expands and contracts. You think what my hair is done in the meantime. So whatever size head you have <laughs> this hat will fit and I'm wearing it with <laughs> I'm wearing it with this 30s dress which is also <laughs> a 30s dress from the end of the decade and you've seen this dress before if you follow me from the beginning it was in my Make Do and Men video because it once had a large hole and tear, now all mended. And if I can extricate from myself from the dog, so I'll just remind you of it. Let me see, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, oh! No, you can sort of see it a little bit. I might put in a bit of a video of me in this dress and hat because the print, the splashy, gaudy floral print is absolutely typical of this period. So <laughs> let's have a look at those fashions. So here we have Mab's fashions and the free pattern which is tied up with this little piece of slightly tatty silk for the charming frocks is for these two charming frocks. So there's a printed silk dress with a little silk flower corsage and a silk shirt waisted dress in a kind of polka dot with these lace inserts. And if we just turn first to these pages, we see these are the patterns and this printed silk one. What it says is, in a few years time, we shall all be looking back and saying, do you remember the coronation year? The summer we all wore those lovely floral pattern silk frocks with bunches of flowers at our necks and those sweet little shirt waist dresses. My dear, I had one, and so the story goes on. And one of the distinctive things about these pattern magazines is they make suggestions about exactly which fabrics to use, where to buy them from, and what colourways to use, as well as instructions on how much of the fabric to buy. So this one, the floral pattern dress in a lovely crepe silk in the softest of blush pink tones that would suit any complexion is printed with groups of flowers in a rich brown. And this is Ferguson's Crepe Felita, and they tell you how much it costs and that it's available in a delightful colour range 
And then for the neat and smart little shirt waist dress, they say we chose that lovely deep blue, which makes blue eyes look bluer still, patterned with tiny white circles. And the white of those circles emphasised by the collar cuffs and strap in a fine white organdy edged with net. If we turn back now front there's a lot of talk of nerves in these magazines which actually always puts me in mind of mrs bennett from pride and prejudice and mr bennett says i'm well acquainted with your nerves they've been my old friends for 20 years at least but yes there's a lot of talk of nerves 20th century overstrain shatters the nerves and robs you of sleep High pressure living with its incessant noise and ceaseless bustle. Can you wonder if it saps your vitality, jars your nerves and resolves in sleepless nights? A moment's thought and you will realise that a 19th century diet is not equal to the 20th century strain on your physical and nervous systems. That's why you need Ovaltine every day. The food for modern times. And there she is, I think pre-Ovaltine. And here we have the early summer fashions. Of course, at this time, and we see this in other catalogues, one changed one's dress through the day. So for the morning, we hear again of washing frocks. Washing frocks are more important than ever. In cotton, linen and silk, they have taken to the tailored lines and smart details that we once considered the hallmark of our best clothes. The Tyrolean peasant fox are new and youthful, while if you want glamour about the house, there are new romantic-looking house coats, buttoned from neck to toe, fitted to the waist with dramatically full skirts. Of course, something else you'd see in the 1950s are those house coats with the flared skirts. So the afternoon, and this is what they think of as an afternoon dress, the style of this rather reminded me of a pattern I sewed up from 1940, right at the start of the decade. My Alice in Wonderland white rabbit dress because it had the thrill which moves from the top of the pocket all the way f around the front to form that panel here. In this pattern it's very prettily echoed by those little ruffles on the sleeves which is of course an idea one could copy quite easily and it says the printed silk tops take the center of the fashion stage not only in flowered silks but in new amusing picture prints they mean the novelty prints that we so often associate with the 50s and then this dress you see it's just peeking out from under that coat there and this is a newcomer in 1937 what they call the edge to edge coat worn over this printed silk frock to make a smart ensemble and then it says there are also the odd jackets and boleros printed over clay so you wore either a printed bolero over a plain dress or a plain bolero over a printed dress and then for evening flowered organdy lace and net for the youthful silks and satin splashed with bright colors for the more sophisticated Turning over the page, we've got Round the London Shops because this is a British fashion paper. And I'm going to read out a few because I love this little summary of what happens when you go around the London shops. So, for fabrics, they see silks printed with maps, pictures, handwriting, and even street scenes complete with buses and cars. I mean, how 1950s is that but it started in 1937 and this is a strange one gloves bag and belt a bright yellow suede worn with a coronation blue suit linen frocks with seams we'll see this later saddle stitched in dark silk i love this idea gaily colored umbrellas of oiled silk spotted in white or 
white kid gloves embroidered with red daisies, cotton play suits for the beach or a cruise, nothing more than scanty shorts and a sun top again seen the 1950s. And rather a gorgeous idea, strands of coral beads twisted together to make a matching necklace and bangle. And here we have these blouse ideas with these very puffy sleeves and just little nipped in at the waist. And they call it a waistcoat blouse. All those ideas for different necklines and there are a little group of women all wearing different styles. And of course we see in this one that rather gorgeous novelty print. So that's what they saw on the left and then we liked on the right. Walking shoes in brightly coloured suede. Oh, what fun. Green, red and coronation blue. Printed cotton handkerchiefs that tie over your head on the beach. And, oh, now this is right up my street. Skull caps covered with tiny flowers for afternoon wear. And these, you see, a lot of. I have some buttons fashions like Tyrolean hats or flower pots complete with flowers. Now less appealing, shoes, bags and stockings, now it's the stockings, all to match in a new bright tan shade. I've never been entirely convinced by bright tan stockings. The Tyrolean blouse is as picturesque as any peasants in printed cotton. There's some wonderful patterns for those. How about filmy white chiffon undies threaded with narrow scarlet ribbon? And here are some more printed blouses and a culotte. I think they're all rather wonderful. So that's the London shops. And then inexpensive frocks because we are in the 1930s where people didn't have much money. The 30s depression. It gives wonderful advice. The loveliest cottons are amazingly inexpensive now. And washing frocks are so simple to make. And 12.072, here we are, has a new scarf neckline. Very easy to achieve. And they suggest Horrocks's mace bun, which costs only one and a half pence a yard. And then here we have the tailored type of wash frock. Easy to make too, with a very simple bodice, button down the front, no pleats in the skirt, just four seams. And what I love here... Below we have photographed one of the summer day fabrics in a nautical design of red knots on a creamy ground. And that reminded me of a little dress I have with a very similar print. And then opposite it, the material photographed is Horrocks's mace bun, flower patterned in red, blue and green on a white background. And this one, it says, you can make in an hour or two of your spare time. I bet I couldn't. For a frock that even your wealthiest friend may envy. The material we suggest is a printed with navy and white circles on a pink ground. And then it tells you how much it costs. And for this one, which they call the new peasant frock, this is what's so sweet. They tell you if this is your first dressmaking effort, they recommend this peasant frock. And then over here, frocks with unusual detail. So here, they call this suitable for the inexperienced dressmaker. It has this head-to-toe frilling and they recommend crepe fabric. And then here we have, now this is interesting, it says Rick Rack Braid, the very newest and smartest trimming, is used to finish the edges of this chic little jumper suit with little pleats at the knees to relieve the plainness of the skirt. And then it tells you that shantang or linens would be ideal. 
And in this one, look at that rather wonderful bodice. And they say pin tucks give a strapped effect to the bodice and the sleeves. And that lovely material tootle lister printed with pale pink and black flowers on a deeper pink ground would make up well. Have the buttons in deepest pink does sound rather wonderful. And then three successes for summer days. And it says fashion decrees pleated frills to give a perfect finish to your new afternoon frock and they're recommending for this one lovely sky blue shade and here we have you have an appointment for lunch at us then slip on your newest frock made with a severely tailored line relieved by rows of frills on the pockets sleeves and neck with this centre pleats giving freedom of movement and then for this rather sort of tunic shape it says if you're rather tall that you will look especially distinguished in this tunic frock with its prettily scalloped collar and its flared tunic skirt and here we have, now I said that they didn't have much money in the 30s, but we're on cruise nights. And here it says it's your evening coat, high at the neck, wide at the shoulders, got this big puff shoulders, and sweepingly full around your toes in the new romantic manner. When you're choosing the materials, remember that furnishing bouquets and taffetas make glamorous evening gowns. And then, they'll be dancing on deck, of course. So you'll need a really grand evening dress. And looking at this dress, I have to insert a little video of the dress that I have passed my mother through from my grandma, which was her dress, which looks very much like this one in the kind of printed silk, as they say, with large splashy patterns, smartest for evening. And mine has a little dress weight just to kind of pull the fabric down between the bust area there. And then we've got these little play seats for long hot days on the deck. When you're not sunbathing, because of course sunbathing had become fashionable in the 1920s. When you're not sunbathing, you want your little play suit so you can add your beach coat over it and here we are we're back to how much you need a washing frock which i entirely agree with i love these everyday frocks because you will need them it says for afternoons and shore excursions and then beauty for the summer girl let your makeup be as smart as your outfits and there's some kind of makeup advice along with these wonderful beach looks with the playfulness of stripes that is so characteristic of the 40s but we're seeing here in the 1930s and opposite we have a spread on important details which is really another way of saying accessories and there's some rather wonderful little ideas in this this one here i i did myself in my felt flowers video which was just so a little corsage of flowers onto the wrists of the gloves and then there's this dainty white detachable collar and then down here is all the styles of shoes that you might choose. Next, we have partnering your frock with the jacket or coat, which says a silk frock is not just a silk frock these days. It's an important part of an ensemble. And here we have what they call the edge to edge and you can see why these edge to edge coats with these very pretty printed silk dresses with their puffy sleeves underneath and here with the this little 
frock and jacket and with a little silk flowers pinned at the bust line and I think you can see how feminine the silhouette is there's a kind of gathering over the bust and the puff sleeves so that all makes this kind of slight little hourglass effect and then the little belts with this kind of self fabric to nip in the waist and then this rather full skirt and then the little bolero with the little flat pockets and the puffy sleeves all very pretty and then on to more of the crew's wardrobe and despite the fact that there's obviously enough money to go on a cruise they talk about planning a wardrobe to give plenty of variety but which costs as little as possible and of course takes up the minimum of trunk space this is rather fascinating if you're wondering what that overdress like coat is made up of it says it's an infinite scape for variety in the new romantic net evening coats i mean that's rather fancy isn't it you make it up apparently in a stiff black net binding the edge with black ribbon and then for this is another one this pairing is another one so you've got your play suit and then you make up a button down the front skirt and a little bolero in the same fabric as your play suit so you can mix and match them and look at those very sweet little pockets that's rather adorable and then for sporty deck games they suggest this new what they call it's culottes really isn't it but they call it a trouser skirt and here is your summer wardrobe they look rather slim but it says for the more matronly figure and it says the sleeves from shoulder to hem are slimming and this dress here they say they've sketched using chamray a printed with tiny sailing ships on a powder blue ground and this nautical theme keeps coming up in the early part of the 20th century. I've got a little 1920 silk dress with sailing ships on and another what they call edge to edge coat and a little bolero which as it says subtracts inches from your waistline and of course the reason for that is the bolero has a bit of volume here but kind of tapers and cuts at the waist so that's actually quite a flattering shape and as they say here for the not so slim although they do look rather slim and then wear an odd jacket and you might think what is that about and what it says is you'll be surprised how many different ensembles you can make with one frock and a variety of odd jackets here is your one frock with these rather wonderful sleeves and then that's the effect of this frock with all these different styles of jacket which i think is rather fun and the reader's problem page now this is fashion problems and it's rather good this is rather lovely i've been asked to be a bridesmaid at a friend's wedding and i wondered if you could give me an idea for a headdress or small hat i'm rather short and the usual bridesmaidy picture hats don't suit me at all what she recommends the editress is she recommends this one of the new flower hats close fitting skull hat of stiffened muslin covered with flowers or flower petals and finished with a veil of coarse net they look delightful and have the advantage that you can wear them afterwards as a suit perhaps tucking a posy of similar flowers in your buttonhole well, here there's a rather fancy look and somebody says i'm making a yellow linen bolero and skirt for a cruising holiday and i would like to trim it with brown 
do you think it would look smart if I bound the edges with a wide brown braid? And she says, sort of tactfully, you could bind the edges with braid, but I think a newer idea is the one I have had sketched above. And this is this one. And it says, with a narrower braid, use very big stitches, whip along the edge, and you can even, as she has done here, trim your gloves to match. And then there's an idea for turning a longer jacket into a bolero. No, oh, now this was my favourite idea. And that was, oops, this one here. So here she says, I've made myself a linen jumper with short sleeves and a Peter Pan collar. And though it's quite successful, I feel it is too plain. Can you suggest what I can do to brighten it up, please? And she says, buttons. Most unusual I could find would, I think, solve this problem. I saw some recently made like, and you can see here, made like tiny flower pots complete with gaily coloured flowers. If you are handy with your needle, you could use plain square buttons. This is rather a jolly idea, plain square buttons. And then you embroider a tiny bunch of flowers above each square button to make a little flower pot. And then if you want to go even further, which of course I always do, you make your pocket into a little flower pot. And it's just a colourful handkerchief in there, but of course you could embroider more flowers, couldn't you? So that's a little selection of the ideas in the agony column. And then there's this rather fetching, a summer coatie that's easy to knit. Just here, and for the jubilee advertisement here, for silver things. Now, the simple black frock for chic and coats for contrast. And it says here, French women have taught us how smart the little black frock can be. As a standby in a limited wardrobe, it is incomparable, right for every occasion, and goes with almost any colour scheme to make a really smart ensemble. And this pattern has been designed with the idea of the LBD in mind. And here we have evening dresses. And this one, it says, in gleaming shot taffeta. Or even lovelier would be slipper satin. And then here is a wonderful print, bias cut dress with a matching puff sleeve bolero. I must say I'm rather drawn to that look. Planning a trousseau. I rather like that culotte petticoat. And it says you don't need to wear anything underneath, they mean a bra, as the fitting bodice takes the place of both brassiere and vest. There's an adorable negligee. And these are the frocks we saw on the front. An advertisement for fabrics from D. H. Evans in Oxford Street. There's a name for my past. London's most modern shop. And there are some wonderful, absolutely characteristic floral designs. So I just wanted to <laughs> interrupt our perusal of the magazine for a moment just quickly wander down memory lane <laughs> because those old department stores I'm sure it's happening everywhere they're all closing now but I was I was brought up in London and I went to school just off Oxford Street so I would walk home through all those big department stores so I'd walk through, there was John Lewis, D.H. Evans, and then Debenhams, and of them all, only John Lewis remains now. And I'd walk through them on my way from school, and they all had abs, I'm sure you remember them, these like massive ground floors, like full of different perfume counters. 
and there's kind of women on the perfume counters that looked really well made up but you know like there was no makeup <laughs> on the counter that hadn't been put to use and and they had all these tester perfumes and so of course it was irresistible as a child i used to go through every every afternoon after school and i would put perfume on my wrist and on my inner elbow on each arm so i could do four perfumes for every trip home from school and then for some reason it was announced at school that john lewis didn't want us <laughs> cluttering up their ground floor between four and five every day trying out their perfumes who can think why so i didn't go into john lewis for few days even maybe a whole week <laughs> before I decided I'd done my penance and could go back <laughs> and and actually my favorite counter used to be the Nina Riki counter because Riki Riki because the woman on that counter she was so lovely and she would like humor me because obviously I was 11 I had no money <laughs> she would say oh would you like to try out this new perfume but my other favourite perfume counter was Gerla, purely because my grandmother used to wear Gerla perfumes, but she wasn't so nice. She was very ferocious. She was probably the one that said she didn't want us all there. Anyway, just looking at this magazine just brought it all back, those wonderful big department stores. And of course, as I grew up, I had holiday jobs in them. So yes just a little a little footnote to mourn the loss of so many of those wonderful glamorous department stores whose ground floors like myself <laughs> reeked of perfume and then on the back we have now this is rather interesting uh, to me anyway not one but three three advertisements for sending off your fabric to be pleated and you might or might not remember my art deco dress in which the pattern just says to send off fabric to the pleaters which i pointed out is not so evident today find the pleaters but in this era there's three advertising their services right here all kinds of pleating skillfully executed and something else that you see in these magazines slim bust it says is adverts for i would have thought at best ineffective creams and it says have you a large flabby bust you can reduce three to five inches and have a lovely alluring slim figure in a few weeks simply with Slim Cream, the remarkable vegetable reducing cream, guaranteed safe, wonderful testimonials. Who can know why it isn't still available? And here you can send off for a bargain pattern for this coat, and this person hasn't sent off, so two different coats, the edge to edge coat here, and then the little box coat here but i love the introduction which says there are two ways of choosing a summer coat one is to take any style that appeals to you trusting to luck that it will go with your frock the other is to bear in mind the frock you will wear underneath it and choose the coat with an eye to building up an ensemble You'll follow the latter method if you value your reputation for being well-dressed. I just wanted to include a mention of two of the most significant movies of 1937. Joan Crawford, of course, in The Bride Wall Red, and Snow White, also of 1937. Thank you so much for joining me to look through 1930s fashion and I hope that you will join me next week when I shall be sewing the iron out flat dress from the late 40s patterns. 
helpful and if you wouldn't mind liking this video that always really helps me and if you haven't subscribed yet if you could consider subscribing that would be wonderful and I shall see you next week won't we Pixie? Yes yes we will <laughs> bye 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 Hello and welcome to a June fashion edition. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a...